granddad was a priest in Trinidad. He used to tell us, when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. great leveler, the thing that comes for us all. Unless you're an idea in the tech industry, in which case not even death may save you. Hi, I'm Stephanie Sterling. Uh, hi, I'm Stephanie Sterling and today's video is, in my opinion, excellent. It contextualizes all of the grim, vile tactics that the tech industry and the video game industry have gleefully adopted in the past few years because the wheels have fallen off and there is no room in hell. Yeah, the video is really good. See, he agrees. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Those familiar with this quote will likely know it from the classic zombie movie George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Incidentally, while Dawn is the better known movie, Day of the Dead is the much, much better movie. I mean, come on, it's got this guy in it. I'm running this monkey for now, Frankenstein, and I wanna know what the fuck you're doing with my time. Where does it say we gotta keep those dumb fucks next door to where we sleep? We're just jerking off here. Where does it say we should do any one thing but shoot the mothers in the head? What the fuck is wrong with you people? They're dead! They're fucking dead, and you want it to tricks? Is that food enough for you? Look here, woman. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe Pilato, will you ever win? Anyway, as much as I'd love to talk about what an incredibly uncomfortable, sinister and pilato flavoured movie Day of the Dead is, let's get back to that quote. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Yes, that one. Thanks. In Dawn of the Dead, the zombies just happen. There's no reason given, there's no reason for there to be a reason. The zombies just are, and we have to deal with it. Only one source of the outbreak is suggested, and it is merely a suggestion. The idea that there is nowhere else for the dead to go. Hell is at capacity. It's contained all the sin as it can, so the once are living are regurgitated as rotting, lurching things. When I look at what's going on in the tech and video game markets, I think of this quote. The comparison between Dawn of the Dead's iconic line and the tremendous fucking mess that is the tech sector isn't necessarily a direct one, but the spirit of the thing is a thought I just can't shake off. If we're just jerking off here. There is no more room in Silicon Valley. There is no more room in the games industry. When you have monetized everything you can, when you have found all the ways in which you can sell a product, when you've exploited the creativity of others to line your pockets until the others are gasping out powder, what can you do? You do as hell does. You spit it all back up. Over the past few years, the galaxy brains at Silicon Valley have quote-unquote innovated by simply taking existing ideas and pretending they're new. And we are going somewhere with this, this will be relevant to games. Did you know vending machines were invented in 2017? It's true! You may believe vending machines were around before 2017, since you've almost certainly seen machines that vend things for most of your life, but those ones must have been some sort of collective hallucination we had. After all, we couldn't have had them before Bodega came along. Described as five foot wide pantry boxes filled with non-perishable items you might pick up at a convenience store, Bodega was the idea of two Google employees, and I'm putting idea in quotes here because yes, 
it's a vending machine, or as one article suggested, a hotel minibar. You pick your items and an app charges you because of course there's an app. If you're stuck for innovation but you want millions of dollars from moron investors, just take an existing idea and slap an app on it. You now have a new product, one that executives at Facebook, Google, Dropbox and Twitter will give you $2.5 million for. Yes, that's how much these gullible twerps spent on pretending the vending machine was invented in 2017. There was more nonsense attached to it all, but it was the usual crap and you will find this baked into all of the products we mentioned today, data collection and machine learning and all of that shit, because ultimately all these products are one big scam for insidious greedy fuckers to learn everything they can about you, so they can get everything else out of you. Another 2017 invention was the bus. You likely will have heard about this one. Lift Shuttle was a stroke of stupidity in which you used an app, obviously, to board a shuttle that went along a set route and picked people up along the way, like a... L like a bus. A, a bus. Like a bus. A bus. It's a bus. It's like a bus because it's a bus. Except with yet another fucking app joining the hundreds and hundreds of fucking apps these shitheads want to cram into your phone. Print the fucking instructions, Lego. Put them on the box or something, Lego. Don't make me download a fucking app so the kids then pester me to use my phone and get their grimy fucking fingers all over it. Sorry, that bit wasn't even in the script. That just came out of me. 2017 was seemingly a good year for hack frauds to seek investment from hack imbeciles. The pause pod, for example, was a private pop-up space where a company's employees could relax. It's just a break room like most companies already have, except worse, because it's a tent. It's a fucking tent. Its developers, again in quotes, had a great fucking clapback to all the critics though. We never claimed that it's not a tent. And who could forget Juicero? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what that word means. It's What's a new Juicero? Word. Okay, define it for me. Possibly the most famous of all of these failures. A juicer. A juicer that cost 300 quid and was laughed at. A lot. Like it deserved. There's a lot of darkness under all the funny, of course. The amount of money these so-called startups are swindling from investors could have gone on things we actually need. Stuff with actual utility. Stuff that isn't a fucking 300 quid juicer. Some of the ideas just straight up contribute to gentrification and pricing the poor out of valuable services. And of course, we have the horrific tech fads we've seen railroaded onto us in the last two or three years, specifically NFTs followed swiftly by AI when the majority of people easily figured out what a scam NFTs were. Both of these attempts to double dip on existing material are particularly vile because, as we all know by now and as I've criticised on this show quite a bit, they're composed entirely of reused and often outright stolen material. They are, like the dead walking the earth, the reanimated leavings of things that already existed. They're fucking dead and you wanna teach me tricks? NFTs were and still are an act of complete desperation as far as I'm concerned. The quote unquote creation of a grifter industry that had no original ideas left. So instead just tried to make money off of stuff that had already made them money. Or in the most extreme cases, stuff that they had no right to at all. Just theft. AI similarly isn't a new idea, it is a zombie composed entirely from a lack of new ideas. Machine learning is itself a very old concept, which has been given a new coat of paint and rebranded as generative AI to make it not look like something that's been around forever. On top of that, the data is just existing content gathered en masse by trawling the internet and stealing everything. Some are taken to calling generative AI, derivative AI, and I highly approve. That's what all of this this is. It's all derivative crap because the innovators of Silicon Valley are officially out of ideas and have run out of ways to exploit cash from people. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth with app functionality. Now here you come, here you come with a whole new set of charts and graphs and records. What you gonna do? Bury them down here with all the other relics of what once was? 
Specifically in video games, see, we're here, we're feeling the results of an industry of predators who've run out of hunting tactics. For nearly 15 years now, we've seen the scam artists running slash ruining the business come up with ways to monetize literally every little aspect of the video game experience. DLC, digital deluxe editions, microtransactions, loot boxes, tiers of digital deluxe editions, season passes, battle passes, online passes, collector's editions, paying to play three days early, tiers of collector's editions, live services, subscription service after subscription service after subscription service. And even in that list there are repackaged versions of the things that are already on it. It's hardly any wonder both NFTs and AI were so gleefully invested in and forced onto us by game industry executives. They're as creatively bankrupt as every other scam artist in the tech sector. They're out of ideas. They found a way to squeeze blood out of every single little fucking aspect of the products they sell and they are pathetically, disgustingly desperate. After all, when your entire business is built on the lie that a company will perpetually grow and every year it'll make massively more money than it did the year before, you're going to reach a point where you start scrabbling. It's an unsustainable position to be in, something I've pointed out for years, and we're finally seeing the results of the long-term damage that's been caused in the time I've been doing this shit. This is still one of the most harmful fantasies the game industry ever indulged in. It's fitting that the result of unsustainable growth has been dubbed the rot economy. Ed Zytron wrote about the rot economy in 2023, describing how once a company reaches a ceiling on the money it can make by simply selling its core product, all it can do is make that product progressively worse as it tries to squeeze more milk from that aforementioned drying udder. Zytron points to Google Search as a fine example of the rot economy at work. Originally, Google was a very straightforward tool with a very straightforward utility. You type in what you want to search for and you'll get the most relevant results. Nowadays, what once was a simple tool is now a sprawling mess that helps only the simple tools running it. Sponsored results barge relevant results out of the way with premium positions bought and paid for, while ever more inscrutable algorithms push not the best results, but the results best engineered by search engine optimization. Mmm, suck down that tasty SEO juice. What voice is that? I should never do that again. And this is before we get to Google's irresponsible, reckless, and downright dangerous use of AI to answer questions. Since May of this year, the advice Google's AI has been giving users has come under fire for, among other things, saying it's safe to mix vinegar and bleach. It's not. That is how you kill yourself with chlorine gas. Speaking of killing oneself, Google AI's response to the phrase I'm feeling depressed was to suggest jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Hmm. That exact suggestion, by the way, was listed as sourced from Reddit. Yes, this is how AI works. It's getting its answers from trolls off of Reddit, and if that's not indicative of a product fucking rotting, I don't know what is. I genuinely feel someone is gonna die as a result of AI's terrible advice. Not just on Google, but everywhere it's been recklessly implemented. Even worse, I feel it's gonna take nothing short of death for some restraints to be put on AI's use. Regulations, as they say, are written in blood. There will be blood. Through this all, companies want more money for less product, a ravenous want that we've seen in video games for a long time now. More content sliced out and resold as DLC. More items that used to be part of a base game locked behind ever more confounding economies. Overly complex pricing tiers and different editions and roadmaps of shit. A confusopoly. A degradation a decay. Publishers monetize so much now that they're truly scraping the bottom of the barrel. What else could you call it when they're charging money for sprays in online games? Or perhaps most pathetic of all, unlocking a game a few days early. Like, that's gotta be one of the biggest fucking cons going, right? Selling three days of early access. As if that's a real product. As if that's anything. The levels of grasping going on are off the goddamn scale. You did 
disgust me. The rot economy is the mainstream game industry's bread and butter and has been for about as long as I've been making videos. Through all those monetization attempts I mentioned earlier, we've gotten to see video games grow more convoluted, less straightforward and outright worse in a thoughtless attempt to squeeze blood from an exsanguinated corpse. Exsanguinated is one of the many words my spell checker routinely tries to autocorrect with other things now because spell checkers, if you haven't noticed, are rotting as well. You can feel the dank decay of this fly-blown economy when you look at what Respawn and EA did with the new season of Apex Legends, a contrivance of monetized tiers, the revocation of the ability to use in-game currency on battle passes, the general push toward charging more money for less stuff. You can smell the rotten stink on the inevitable sloughing off of value that Microsoft's Game Pass is currently suffering too. Game Pass started as a great value, one I praised but always warned wouldn't last and here we are. After initially offering day one launch titles and a big library of free games, Microsoft has started fucking with it, so the deal's getting worse all the time. The first thing it did was undermine its own claim that you got launch day access to games by offering games that have an even earlier launch day if you buy it rather than get it on Game Pass. That was one of the knock-on effects of that pay-to-play early tactic I mentioned a moment ago. Microsoft's own fucking games were pulling that shit too. And what is that, if not a very clear attempt at a double dip and an inevitable rotting of a service? More recently, Microsoft announced changes to Game Pass that truly ruin what it once was. Yes, they're doing fucking tears because, of course, they are. Because when there is no more room in hell, the dead will offer a tiered pricing structure. The rebranded Game Pass Standard will offer a back catalogue of Xbox games and online multiplayer, and that's it. If you want launch day titles, cloud gaming, and the PC Game Pass bundled in, you'll need to go for Game Pass Ultimate. All forms of Game Pass will receive a price hike as well, with Ultimate now charging $19.99 a month. Game Pass's new tiered subscriptions demonstrate perfectly how businesses generate their growth these days. It creates the illusion of value for one product by taking value away from another. Notice how Microsoft is offering absolutely nothing new with these changes. No new service, no new benefit, there's no reward for using Ultimate, there's just punishment for not using it. All MS has really done is take a straightforward service and make it more complex while charging extra for the privilege. And for the sake of clarity, I've not gone into all the little details and additional complications that make the Game Pass changes even more confusing and arbitrary. From renaming multiplayer access to Game Pass Core to all the complications they've added for how existing users will be affected by the new tiers and pricing, it's a fucking sprawl of information that, like Google before, it takes a good thing and makes a complete fucking mess of it. Turning something good into a disaster circus that offers no benefit to the user but only serves to enrich themselves. Because they couldn't come up with one new idea to make money, they couldn't offer any extra value, there is no more room in hell. Tried to cover my ass earlier in the script by saying that the comparison to George Romero's film wasn't entirely direct, but the more I wrote, the more I saw that it kind of is. I've gotten a ton more mileage out of that quote than I thought I would. What a great video this is. Hang on. Give myself a pat on the back. Oh, my fucking shoulder. Old wrestling injury. It dislocates whenever it wants now. Not when I want it to, like a trick at a party. It just pops out and back in again. Let me tell you, it ain't just Silicon Valley that's falling the fuck apart. Well, at least they don't work for Mr. Beast. This is how the big budget game market has been limping along on both a micro and macro level, lurching from one grift to the next, devaluing its products to falsify value, carving games into pieces to hide how they're charging more money for less content, and rotting. Just fucking rotting everything away because of the big lie of infinite growth. Because simply being successful isn't enough to succeed. Because there's not enough money in the world for these greedy cunts. And of course, this is all tied into the excessive and cruel layoffs we've been seeing across the business. As the desperation to maintain the lie forces executives to cut away at everything both inside and out to scrape enough money together to fake the appearance of growth. Never mind George Romero comparisons, at this point the game industry is reminding me of another film about dead bodies. Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> God, is this great or what? It's a morbid fucking farce. 
And it's funny, isn't it? Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. It's really bloody funny how in all these cuts, in all this devaluing and derailing and all this rot, executives are still paying themselves healthily millions of dollars a year, if not billions. And no point are they scrimping and saving with their own money on the line. Yet, if they did, they'd save such excessive amounts of cash as to perpetuate the lie for at least another 10 years. You want to save money? Huge amounts of it? Pay execs less. It's literally just that simple. And I'm literally using the word literally, literally. It is that simple. Maybe one day they'll truly be forced to consider it because we're not just at a point where there's no more room in hell. Pretty soon, the dead won't even find room on the earth. Is that food enough for you? Yeah, yeah. Good video, I think. Not bad for an idea I had at the very last minute that I thought would be too tenuous to actually work. Anyway, speaking of working, I'm not just a raconteur, a video game writer, a reviewer, a critic, a, a, an actor, a raconteur. I'm also a professional wrestler and this coming weekend, August the 17th, I will be in Preston Flag Market defending the PCW Women's Championship that I have held now for, I believe, 512 days at the time of talking. So that'll be good. Um, no tickets needed, it's a municipal show. We literally uh, put up a ring in the high street. We do it every year, it's one of the best shows I do. Um, so feel free to come along to that if you want. Look up PCW for the deets. Uh, other than that, uh, I will pull another idea out of my ass and hope it's good next week. Thank God for me.